The Mobile and Ohio reached Jackson, Tennessee in 1858 and established a small yard and repair shop on the east side of the city. During the Battle of Jackson, Tennessee, also known as the Battle of Salem Cemetery in 1862, the M&O shops in Jackson were destroyed by the Union Army. Jackson was important to the m and due to its centralized location on the railroad. So a new larger shop was built south of the city. Named Claymore Yard, this shop and its successor would serve the railroad for many years to come. In 1864, during the Battle of Mobile Bay, the m and car repair shop at Whistler, Alabama was destroyed. That work was also sent to Jackson's Claymore Yard for the duration of the war. After the Civil War, the Mobile and Ohio's finances were in shambles due to constantly having to rebuild track, equipment, and infrastructure damaged during the Civil War. The railroad went into receivership, and the new owners decided to make a major investment by improving Claymore Yard. And by 1870s, the Claymore Shop Complex consisted of a 32-stall roundhouse with a 110-foot turntable, locomotive machine shop, forging shop, and a car repair shop. The Southern Railway gained controlling interest in the M&O during the early 1900s. A merger was attempted, but never approved. The Tri-State Tornado, which hit Murfreesboro, Illinois in 1925, leveled the car and locomotive shop there. The roundhouse was rebuilt, but the back shop area was not. Instead, they decided to rebuild and enlarge Claymore shop to handle the extra work. The new Iceland shop, which was completed in 1925, was the largest and most modern repair shop on the Mobile on Ohio Railroad. In 1938, the Southern Railway sold its controlling interest in the M&O to the Gulf Mobile and Northern. GM&N President Isaac B. Taggart saw a lot of potential with the Mobile in Ohio. And in 1940, he merged the two lines, creating the Gulf Mobile and Ohio Railroad. The 1940s and 50s were very good years to the railroad. In 1947, the GM&O merged with the Alton Railroad, which gave it access to Chicago and Kansas City. It also became the first major railroad in the United States to completely dieselize its locomotive roster. In the 60s, fierce competition from the Illinois Central Railroad and the construction of Interstate 55, both of which paralleled the GM&O from Chicago to New Orleans, severely cut down on the railroad's traffic until the line was barely hanging on. The GM&O was purchased in 1972 by the Illinois Central. The new company named the Illinois Central Gulf. Iceland shop was downgraded to basically just doing running repairs on locomotives and cars because ICG moved all the heavy maintenance to other shops around the system. In 1984, the Iceland shops and yard were sold to the West Tennessee Railroad. 
WTRR decided the large 60-year-old shop building was more than they needed. So in 1986, they built their own shop and sold the former GM&O back shop building to William Steel Company, which still uses it as a heavy fabrication shop. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, hit that notification bell. You can also support us on Patreon. Links are in the description.